Drive with me, fellow video watching people. I have a different argument against reparations, specifically reparations for black people, but more generally just reparations for any sort of historical wrong, uh, especially when the person receiving the reparations was not directly harmed uh, by that historical wrong. The thing with reparations, the whole idea is that people in the past did something wrong to your ancestors, and that something wrong that was done resulted in you not getting advantages because, you know, your family was impoverished because of other people's racism, or some sort of wrong, right? So the idea behind reparations is you were wronged by a certain group of people, therefore those people owe you some form of restitution for harming you. That's the idea, anyway. But the problem comes when it's not the people that actually harmed you, because you weren't the one harmed. Your ancestors were harmed. You, if you were harmed, were only harmed indirectly. So reparations for you as someone who is descended from someone who is harmed could actually be a very bad thing. Um, arguably, worse than just leaving you alone and letting you live your life as you see fit without this financial interference. Now you might be stepping back and going, huh, this uh, this weirdo cis straight white male guy, he, he's, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's, he's not black, he doesn't understand the black experience and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. I don't have to, to make this argument because the argument is you know that thing where good people or where soft people create hard times or whatever it is? I don't remember the exact wording of it. But the idea is that when you see people who have wealth that was given to them by their parents, that they didn't earn themselves, they have a tendency to blow it. Fortunes have a tendency to get mostly nuked within three generations. <clears throat> so if your parents were to give you a bunch of money, well, that doesn't mean that they actually taught you how to manage that money. Typically, if you get something you did not have to put blood, sweat, and tears into, you do not inherently value that something the way that you would if you had to work for it. If you spend the time, if you do the time to put in the work to make something happen, there is a very immense sense of personal satisfaction, pride, and protectiveness. In fact, this is the reason that I argue it's totally fine to assault or even kill someone if they attempt to steal your property, damage your property, because your property is obtained by exchanging a portion of your life. But that's the problem with this reparations argument, with the whole concept of reparations for harm to ancestors rather than yourself directly. Because what will happen if you actually give these reparations out. First of all, you don't deserve reparations because you weren't harmed, your ancestors were harmed. But, but, let's pretend that that's not an argument on the table. Let's pretend that we just give you however much it is. The most recent video that I heard, some lunatic activist in California, never a slave state in the first place, wants every black resident of California to be given $800,000 just because they're black as reparations or else. So that's insane. But let's say that kind of thing did in fact happen. What happens if you take a bunch of people who supposedly, and we're generalizing about large groups of people based on a very broad category. <clears throat> so such generalizations are generally not applicable to everyone, but the assumption the inherent assumption here, what is on the ceiling of my vehicle, Jesus Christ, um, is that you are not wealthy, you're not educated, you're poor, you're in a, a bad socioeconomic circumstance, not because of anything you did, but because your parents were impoverished, restricted, and so on. And there is potentially some validity to that, although slavery reparations, we're talking like great-grandparents, so there's really, that there's, no, there's been several generations to fix that problem, but 
even if it was your parents. Let's say your parents were held down in the 60s, that, that the man kept them down, so to speak, and that because of that, they could not get good jobs, they could not make as much money, therefore they're in a worse situation, therefore your parents could not give you a better life because, you know, big evil majority whitey in the United States decided that black people needed to be oppressed in the 60s, right? Let's assume that that's true. Let's roll with that. So what happens if we give you these reparations? Well, you didn't work for them. You didn't do anything for them. And that's not any kind of a statement against you. The fact of the matter is, if I slap $100,000 into your hand and say, this is because your parents were oppressed and you couldn't have a good upbringing, good luck. You know what's gonna happen? Have you ever heard of poverty fatigue? When someone is poor, when someone is broke, when someone doesn't have enough money, and they have to make choices between even basic things, do I eat or do I pay for the heating bill? That kind of thing. When people are poor, they do not have things, they do not have access to things, and they suddenly get money, any amount of money. You see it all the time, tax returns, stimulus checks, that money's gone. And it's not typically gone in a year, it's gone in a week or a month, maybe even a day. If someone hands you $100,000 and says, here you go, here's a bunch of money, we did, you know, the government did wrong by your parents and we feel bad about it, here's your reparations, here's $100,000. What are you gonna do with that $100,000? <clears> Chances are extremely high based on the history of anybody who grew up poor who has the poor mentality, uh, look at lottery winners and all of it, the evidence is extremely strong in favor of you blowing that money. God knows what you blow it on, but the point is maybe you buy a car. And yes, I understand someone who has an unreliable vehicle suddenly having a reliable vehicle. Okay, that's a, that's a life changer, but <laughs> here's the problem with that. <laughs> you're gonna blow the money on a car. You're not gonna get a $20,000 car or a $30,000 car. You have $100,000. You haven't owned anything nice in your life, supposedly. So, <clears throat> you're gonna, you finally have the money. You're gonna go get a nice car. You're gonna treat yourself because it sucks ass being poor. I'm not poor anymore, I got $100,000. You're gonna go buy a $50,000 car. You might buy a Tesla. You're gonna go buy a Tesla and a bunch of nice clothes and blah, 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 blah. You're gonna blow that money on nice things so that you don't continue to feel the poverty. So you feel like you've gone up in the world. But the problem is you won't actually be going up in the world. You won't. You have, okay, you have possessions. Congratulations, you have depreciating assets. Boy, haven't you just improved your life. That car's it loses 10 grand as soon as you drive it off the lot, and it loses more value over time. Those clothes, they wear out, okay. You, you might be living at large for a year or two off that 100 grand, but the problem is, you're not making any more money. You were just given money one time, and that money is not growing. Now, okay, maybe you might be smart enough that you can, oh yeah, I will, uh, I'll invest it or whatever, there's a good chance you won't do that. Even if you know that you should, you won't. So that's the argument that I have against reparations. If you just hand people money because their parents or grandparents or whatever were wronged by the government in the past, all they're gonna do is blow the money. They're not gonna do anything to make more money. They're gonna blow the money that you give them and then end up right back where they were because now what happens with that Tesla? Oh, they own it, but they can't afford the insurance. You know, whatever. It, they end up potentially in an even worse spot than they were in before you handed them the money. So the whole notion of giving people who have been oppressed reparations is complete and total bullshit. Because all you're really going to do is set them up for an even worse failure down the line. And arguably, uh, that's more malicious than anything else. All right, I'm gonna stop here for a second. I don't know where this is, I hope they don't shoot me. Um, but yeah, I need to turn around. Um, 
All right, well, I'm going to turn around and you enjoy my argument against reparations. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.